all the information is in back. Sign up uh, for you, junior high, senior high, and uh, sign ups in the back. And then there's permission forms also back there, so we know that your folks know where you're at. And um, so do that. And then next Sunday, um, we're, we're giving Pastor Mike the day off. And there's a guy. Uh, you're actually giving Mark sorry. the day off. Mark, are you I asked him to preach. Oh, you did? Yeah. Mark, wherever. You got the day off with pay. Hey, <laughs> and then, uh, so we got a special guest coming, and uh, he's a former, uh, not former friend, but he's a former teacher, I guess, and co congregate in the same church. I did my internship at a church at Dunphy Missionary near Fort Wayne. Some of you guys might have driven through the neighborhood, and it's small, it's over near Arcola, I believe. And, um, He's coming, and he's going to talk about Israel and probably some of the things that are going on in Israel today. And he's put together a 2015 group to go to Israel, uh, tour the Holy Lands. I know right now it's not too popular of a time to be going over there if you follow any of the news. But it will be because their, their economy is dependent upon tourism. And you will see some of the sites that will bring this book that we read all the time to life. And he's, uh, he takes over groups, and he's very knowledgeable in all the archaeological things, the places you go. It will be, I guarantee, it'll be better than going with the sea travel or any of that stuff that you may have thought about doing. Uh, I had an amazing time when I went for two weeks, and I got to stay in Jerusalem for seven days. I spent two days at resorts on the Dead Sea, which sounds dreary and draft, but it is amazing. It is a fascinating place to be. I walked through En Gedi where David cut off the castle of Saul and all that story. And I got a, I got probably the rock that David hit. <laughs> I'm not too sure, but I'm, I'm speculating. I'm bringing it in. You guys can it. But uh, so you get to go see all those places, and it's really amazing. I encourage you to be here and listen, and then if you just happen to have a few thousand bucks laying around, maybe you can go. Okay? Thank you. And we're going to help support somebody going, so I want to do that so we can maybe get somebody from our own congregation to go. That's all. Yeah, it's really important what's going on in Israel because we know the scripture says, I'll bless those that bless you and curse those that curse you. And a lot of you in here are into prophecy and you follow it and watch it a lot. And uh, Israel is really in the mix of things right now. So. It'll be interesting to hear him talk and, and fill us in on exactly uh, where the church fits in with Israel and everything. And then we got Wisdom Meets Passion Week. So let's keep on thinking and praying about that week uh, and who we might uh, uh, invite to come with us. We're hoping that 100 people will invite 100 people. And uh, there's seven nights in... Uh, it's just going to be cool. It's going to be cool. Well, I think that brings us up to speed. Uh, while we've been in Acts, we've seen many wonders and miracles. And we've seen them happen even today in the church. So many people in the church universal today said miracles and wonders were for such a time as that. But they're for such a time as this also. Jesus did the miracles. And Jesus says, I am the same yesterday, today, and forever. So why would we doubt that we can't have miracles happen yet today? Now, I had one happen to me last week. I, I got called, uh, or this week, the first of the week, I got called to, to do another funeral. And, and uh, just before I walked up to preach, I felt something in my coat pocket, and I pulled my coat open and I pulled it out and there was a card there and somebody somewhere had slipped me a hundred dollar Visa gift card and I stuck that rascal in my suit jacket and I only wear it at funerals and it's been quite a while praise God since I've done one and there that hundred dollars was in my pocket and I thought God you're so good you still do miracles and I used the, the wording be so comfortable that with a miracle that when it doesn't happen, you become uncomfortable. 
God is a miracle working God and he still does it today. We see the church growing daily because of the gospel. And that's the only thing that can cause you and I as humans to do and grow is the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's the saving grace, the message of Jesus Christ, and it causes us to grow. But we saw in scripture there's also a flip side. Peter, John, and Stephen are persecuted. And we read last week where Stephen was stoned to death because of the word, the gospel, the name of Jesus Christ. They order Stephen killed and it causes turmoil. Uh, there are probably just a guesstimate of around 10,000 new converts when Stephen gets stoned. And these people are on fire for Jesus. Can any of you remember when you first got saved how on fire you were for Jesus? Oh my gosh, I can't, I'm telling you what a deal that was for me. I couldn't read enough, I couldn't do enough, I was just on fire. And we can't lose that, we need to keep that, that flame fan. But it caused turmoil. All these 10,000 saved people are fair in their life. If they can stone Stephen, one of the deacons, oh my gosh. Well, he was actually an apostle. Philip's a deacon we're going to talk about. It scares you. If people started coming into Kenderville and, and they had the power to overwhelm us as Christians and persecute us, go from house to house, would it not scare us to death? It would put our faith to test. One of the greatest writers of the Bible, Paul enters in our, our, uh, our, our scripture that we had last week, and we just kind of read over it a little bit. He has a different name at this time. It's called Saul. And he persecutes the early church and its members. And it says back there in, uh, in 8, verse 1, that started the, the chapter, and Saul was there giving approval to his death, and that's Stephen's death. Saul was there giving approval for that. Remember, they had a meeting and stoned Stephen to death, and Saul is a member of the Sanhedrin, and he supports it at this time. And we're going to talk in a couple weeks more about Paul. Or so. Let's read Acts 1 through 8 and we'll get started here. On that day, well, and Saul was there giving approval to his death. And on that day, a great persecution broke out against the church at Jerusalem. And all except the apostles were scattered throughout Judea and Samaria. Godly men buried Stephen and mourned deeply for him. But Saul began to destroy the church. Going from house to house, he dragged off men and women and put them in prison. Those who had been scattered preached the word wherever they went. Philip went down to a city in Samaria and proclaimed the Christ there. And when the crowds heard Philip and saw the miraculous signs he did, they all paid close attention to what he said. And with shrieks, evil spirits came out of many, and many paralytics and cripples were healed. So there was great joy in that city. Awesome scripture. And it's a bittersweet thing. And you know what? We all, all experience that. There is good and bad in about everything we do or have to experience. And this is a bittersweet thing. Even though they're scattered, there's still cool things going on. Saul was there giving approval to Stephen's death. And we see in a couple weeks that Saul is actually Paul. When God changes our life, he gives us a new name. And I want us to know that this morning, that you know what, there's an old self that we have before we accepted Jesus Christ. 
And that stuff, Satan will run that through our minds constantly. And we need to let that go because if we've asked Jesus for forgiveness, he forgets it as far as the east is from the west, never to bring it up again. But when, when we get a life change, God knows us in a different light, in a different way. And I know people around me, even yet today, uh, he's the one that's a pastor of that church at Destiny. Not him. I was there with y'all. But God changed me. And oh, he's still changing me. I'm not done yet. But thank God I'm not where I used to be. Saul hated and persecuted Jesus' followers. That's you and me. He was after us. How many times have we done something, especially for the Lord, and it turned out to be wrong? Has anybody ever done that? Thought you were serving God with all your heart and might, and it went sour? It doesn't go sour with God. Because He takes everything that we do that went bad and turns it to good because we love Him and we're called to His purpose. There is always a bigger picture. And when we're in our mess, when we're in our trials and tribulation, we're thinking, oh my gosh, what happened here? Well, it's God at work. He's using us for His enemies. God is a good God. And Saul's going to, uh, will soon save the Gentiles. Saul is right now killing people in the church and locking them in jail, and God is going to turn that bad to good, and he is going to use Paul to minister to the Gentiles. God has a chosen group, they're called Jews, and the Gentiles need to be saved. They need to hear the word, they don't know it. And he's going to use this bad and turn it to good in a couple more chapters here, and save people. What Satan means for bad, God turns to good, and that's in Genesis 50, 20. Satan has a plan to ruin everything that we say and do, and God has a plan to use it for good. I was thinking about the parable in Mark 4 uh, when I was writing this stuff down, and it was sowing good seed. I think Pat's got Mark 4, 15 up there. It says some people are like seed along the path where the word is sown. Uh, the word is Jesus. We know the, the word became flesh and dwelt among us in John. So where Jesus is sown. As soon as they hear it, Satan comes and takes away the word that was sown in them. And here we've got close to 10,000 people that are saved, they're on fire for Jesus, and this turn comes, and they stone Stephen and throw people into fear, and they're trying to rob the faith away from these new believers. So it's a different thing that's going on. Satan comes to steal our comfort and peace in Jesus. Does anybody notice that? Whenever I get strong in the word and, and serve harder and push harder, I think there's more opposition. The more we serve and, and obey God's word, the harder Satan wants to, to kill, steal, and destroy everything we do. So many have come to the Lord and Satan hates it. And God allows a man, Saul, to dismantle the church. And there are so many times we question our God if you're a God in heaven and love us like you claim you do, why do you allow these bad things to happen to us? We've all been there. I know I've been there a lot. God, why are you doing this? And he always has a bigger picture. Things don't always come from Satan. They do come from God as well. He allows things to happen to wake us up and show us what he needs and has in mind. He knows he needs the church to grow even more. Uh, the church is for all the people. How many know that when, when God uh, sent his son Jesus, he died for everybody? It wasn't just for a select few. 
It wasn't for the just the Jew. It says there's now no Jew nor Gentile, no male nor female. Jesus came for everybody. And we're in this little, little Jerusalem area, like Kenderville. And Jesus has got plans for South Milford and Avila and Fort Wayne and Indianapolis and San Diego, California and New York and China. He's got plans for everybody to be saved and know Jesus as Lord and Savior. And the new church is 10,000 strong. Uh, uh, I don't know Kenderville's population now, but it, it's it's not even as big as Kenneville right now. Only is hearing the word of God. And God wants it to go everywhere. So what does he do? Use a man to persecute the church and split it and send it out. What an amazing thing it is that God has the plan and it's so much bigger than you and I. And all we can see is the suffering and the pain and the hurt in it when God has so much more in the end. We went to uh, uh, Slidell, Louisiana when uh, Katrina hit down there and we got blessed to work on this old Baptist preacher's house. He was 89 years old and there was nine foot of water in the house. It went above the ceiling and up into the, the peak of the house. Ruined everything in that house. And they cooked lunch for us and while we'd sit down and eat, he would preach to us. That rascal couldn't keep from preaching and teaching Jesus. He was a black pastor. T.A. was his name. And he, he got a little slow spot there when he was talking. And I said, T.A., can you tell us something? And he said, what? I said, why did God allow Katrina to come and devastate this place like it did? Oh, he said, that's easy, Pastor Mike. He said, we all got lazy and fat. We were sitting here on our dust expecting the government to come and take care of us. He said people wouldn't work. All they did was beg. He said the water's coming down the street a foot deep and they're sitting there waiting on a bus to come and get them and haul them onto there. They wouldn't even get up and run for their life. And he said, you know what? Thousands of them died too. He said, what we've heard the last two weeks is family here have gone to family. They're in Michigan. They're in Minnesota. They're in California. God dispersed them all over the United States to get them out of this comfort zone. And I'll never forget him explaining it like that. He said, what God... Or what Satan meant for bad, God has turned to good. He shook this place up, and it'll never be the same. And that's the way with the church. It's never been the same. Since it got persecuted and dispersed, it was the very beginning of evangelism and mission work. And we're going to see it as it unfolds here in Acts and goes on. God allows a man, Saul, to dismantle the church. And things don't always come from Satan. We have to remember that God is in this thing. And he allows things to happen. He needs the church to grow. And only a small portion of the people in Jerusalem and the outlying areas have heard the gospel. And God allows discomfort to make us grow. I don't know about you, but I've been uncomfortable a whole lot in my life. And it caused me to lean in and draw off of God and trust in Him more. And when I did, He would supply the need I had. And I had more faith and it just keeps going and growing and growing. And that's what He wanted. God spreads the church to the Judea and Samaria. It says in verse 1 there. On that day, a great persecution broke out against the church at Jerusalem. And all except the apostles were scattered throughout Judea and Samaria. And this fulfills that Acts, that Acts 1 on scripture there. And I think Pat's got it up there. Acts 1-8. Judea. Yeah. Yeah. But you'll receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, Jesus says. 
and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all of Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. And when Jesus said that to them, they didn't have a clue how it was going to happen. And he uses a group of men to stone Stephen to death to get it into motion. The power of God in our calling is not about comfort, but spreading God's word. So don't think you're going to be a Christ follower and be effective for Jesus and have it be comfortable. Because he promised us that if I was persecuted, why would you not be for my name's sake? God brings about great things in our suffering as believers. He turns that bad to good. And I don't know about you, but I love good. Good works for me. And it works for everybody else because that's what they're seeking, what they need. The apostles stayed, it says, and buried Stephen. They took care of their, their best friend. And Stephen's death will soon cause Philip to start an evangelistic tour. That's where our start of evangelism is in the Bible. Where people hear the word of God. And we get out of our comfort zone, get out of our area, and go to do it. It'll cause Saul's conversion, we're going to see here in a couple chapters. It's going to take this nasty guy that's persecuting them and turn him into a powerhouse that ended up writing a bunch of this book right here that we study and love, the Word of God. And that ought to be a word for some of us in here. Don't ever think you've done something so bad that God can't use you. If you have asked him into your heart as Lord and Savior, you're in, dude. And nothing is too bad because of the forgiveness and the grace of Jesus on the cross for us to be used by God. So don't ever think you've done so, so many bad things that you can't be used. Peter sets out on a missionary journey as well, we're going to see. And a church in Antioch will be born. And it's all kingdom work. And I want us to know that that has to be our main focus as the body of Christ, is kingdom work. It's not about us. It's not about a big building. It's not about being comfortable. It's about kingdom work. Spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ to a hurting world. Tension is high around Jerusalem, and every one of the believers scattered. Uh, people had to leave their homes. Can you imagine tomorrow or even this afternoon having to leave your house and run for your life? I can only imagine. You know that's happening everywhere around the world today as we speak. People are being persecuted. We become uncomfortable sometimes before we'll move, and that's what T.A. was telling me. Uh, God allowed the Katrina to come get people to move. And we don't ever want to let ourselves as the body of Christ get that comfortable that we need something, a tragedy, a traumatic experience to cause us to move. We need to be first with God and love our neighbors ourselves and be serving the community. In your discomfort, ask God what he might be preparing you for. If you're in uh, an uncomfortable position right now, pray and ask God for wisdom. Show, let him show you why you're going through what you're going through. He will. We see Philip, a new deacon, goes as well to Samaria. I don't know if any of us in here remember much when we talked in John about Samaria, but people didn't go to Samaria. Well, that place got shook up and they went in there and caused a bunch of havoc and caused that place to scatter. And some of the Jews that hid and, and were spared from death stayed there and built Samaria back up. And they had people from outside to come in. And they intermarried with, with people that weren't Jews. And boy, that place was looked down on. They intermarried and they didn't like it. That was against Jewish <coughs> custom, and you did not do that, and all of us, all of Samaria was filled with that. 
intermarriage. They called it a, a, an evil place. And they would walk around the outside of that to get where they wanted to go. Except for Jesus. And that rascal walks right in there, right dead center through it. And what does he do but meet the woman at the well? The Samaritan woman. And saves her. <coughs> And it happens time after time when Jesus would speak to them. Jesus walked in and saves the woman at the well. And you know I was thinking we seldom want to go where we're needed. Because we know if we go there, it's going to cause it. It's going to cost us something. We're going to have to do something. And I was thinking about Jonah getting sent to Nineveh. And he said, God, if I go over there, you're going to save them people. And they're not worthy. And I ain't going. But he found out how that worked for him. <laughs> if God's got the plan for Nineveh, if God has the plan for Samaria, if he's got the plan for Kinneville, it's going to happen. So we need to be in his will and help him accomplish what he wants. If it doesn't fit our plans, uh, and we might have to give a lot, we don't want to do it. It's just our nature, and we all have to die to our old self and take on the heart and the compassion of Jesus. <laughs> Philip finds himself in the city of Samaria, Samaria, and after being rejected by all the love, uh, by all the love of Jesus comes to town through Philip. Everybody's been rejected. Nobody loves them. Nobody cares for them. Nobody will help them at all. And here comes Philip with the love of Jesus. Craving for that love, people listen. It says they all paid close attention. And I see a lot of that in Destiny Family of Faith. And God help me if it's just me seeing things. But we've had people come in here that weren't accepted by others. Churches have heard them. And we've loved them. And they've come to know Jesus. When we planted the church, there were six couples in here that were living together. Man, did I get a bunch of grief over that baby. You're coming down and living together. I said, no, we're going to love them into getting married. And they're all married. Four years it's taken for them all to get married. And I had two other people come up to me this morning and ask me to marry them. And I'm going to take that example right now to tell you, don't tell me stuff on Sunday morning. <laughs> Ruth Acker can testify to that because she asked me a couple weeks ago on Sunday if she could use next door for a couple different things. And she asked me this morning, I told her he didn't even know what she was talking about. And I promise you those two weddings won't happen. If you don't write it down and give it to me, there are so many things going on in my mind on Sunday morning. Tell me on Monday. And I'm not scolding you. I'm not being mean. I'm just telling you, I promise you, I'll forget. Because I'm focused on being up here and doing what i got to do. And you guys all bombard me with different things. And, and I love you for that. Yeah, I'm so glad Destiny can serve you in that capacity. Don't do it to me on Sunday morning. <laughs> I'll forget it, I promise you. And it won't be intentional. So write, write it down, hand me a note, and I'll put it on my desk, and man, will we hit her Monday morning. I promise you that. The tension's high around Jerusalem, and every one of the believers scattered. And it's for the purpose of getting the word out all over the world. It's not only going to stop in, in Samaria, but it's going to go to Judea all over the land. And there will be no end. It says to the uttermost parts of the world. And we were talking about people needing love and mercy and grace. And I think that's why destiny has grown so fast. You all are so loving and caring for people. And help us to never, never lose that. We can get comfortable and slip and fall. Evangelism is birth and missions is birth.
and there's going to be here in the near future, we're going to get some mission trips and evangelistic things going here. Uh, Roger and, and uh, Nate and Tanya have got things going on with our youth in the city to reach out and touch them, and it's just awesome what's going to happen. But there are more witnesses, more believers, and more territory, and the church is growing. Lives are always changed with Jesus. Do you know that? They're always changed with Jesus. The evil spirits, it says, screamed as they came out of the people as they were set free. There are people around us that have evil spirits in them right now. And